Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. It's uh, the first Saturday of Lent. We've just completed Pure Week, and I have a reflection for you that I'm entitling How to Keep the Great Lent. How to Keep the Great Lent. Well, if you've kept Pure Week uh, as the church, as the Triodian councils, then uh, you've just gone through the most rigorous week, a truly brutal week. Uh, of fasting. The gates of hell are thrown open on the first day of Great Lent every year. The demons come pouring out because they're so terrified of the incredible grace that is available to Christians who keep the fast and that they want to stop it right at the beginning. They know if they can get us, uh, you know, broken down, then we will lose hope and we won't move forward. Uh, it's a time, pure week, when we fast so rigorously that we're, we're literally grabbing uh, our souls and uh, riding the chariot, so to speak, which is usually the body, which is supposed to be the chariot and the soul guiding it by its good intentions. Often it's completely upside down, isn't it? And it's the good intentions of the soul that are being tyrannized by bodily passions and quest for pleasure. And uh, we aren't able to do much. I hope you've had a good pure week. If you haven't, then I encourage you to figure out what a good pure week is. <laughs> if you, if you, a good pure week is serious prayer and serious fasting. Uh, and when I mean serious, the Triodian councils, uh, one meal on Wednesday after the pre-sanctified and one on Friday after the pre-sanctified. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's certainly a shock uh, to the whole system. Always. There are terrible temptations, but it's very blessed to take an aggressive approach. If you can't do that all, do what you can. Push yourself. That's the important thing is to push yourself very hard to kind of grab control of your heart and of your body so that you can set the course for where you want to go instead of being pushed along where you don't want to go. As usual, uh, I had an amazingly bizarre pure week. I've never not had one. There's always, uh, especially for pastors, I think, special temptations in the first week of Great Lent, and there certainly were for me this this week. Um, my dear wife was babysitting uh, Wednesday night during our family night, as she always does, a scad load of young ones. We have so many kids in our uh, babysitting while well, we have our catechetical school that uh, sometimes even with all her helpers, it gets out of control. And some little one, I'm watching my words carefully, <laughs> decided to <laughs> knock over a fishbowl right on her iPhone and poof, goodbye iPhone. And today after, uh, after this week of fasting and after having a funeral this morning, I came home to have, I wanted an a delicious <laughs> I wanted a delicious green apple with a little peanut butter and someone stole my peanut butter now that's unforgivable I'm not going to go into uh grading the degree of seriousness of that sin but uh wow temptation after temptation how do you keep the fast how ought you Walk through the days of great and holy land to the benefit of your soul and to the glory of God. Well, this week, as we were praying through all the services, uh, morning and evening, the Lenten Orthros and the Lenten Vespers and the Great Complins and the Canon of St. Andrew, we had a massive, massive display of hymnody counseling us on how to enter into the great fast and how to keep it. I wrote down nine things I heard for your edification. Listen to these nine principles. We are to embrace the fast as from Christ. The texts of the services say that Great Lent was given to us by Christ, our rescuer. So don't ignore the fast. It's given to you by Christ. Second, we're to embrace it with joy. This is a common theme on the first day in all the services. Embrace the, faith, the fast with joy. Of course, this is him that he applying our Lord Jesus Christ's teaching that we should fast not with dour faces, but put oil on our head and fast with God in, in our eyes. Third, with eager heart, eager, 
Don't let's not just be eager for the fast to be over, over and come to Pascha. Of course, we're eager for that, and hopefully for the right reasons, not just so that we can eat meat. Let's be eager for what God has intended to give us in the fast, for the fact that we can draw near to Him through this holy time, these holy 40 days, this special tithe of the year that we offer to God that sanctifies the whole year. For soberly, soberly, this means thoughtfully, uh, reasonably, with a proper perspective. Five, with repentance and reverence. Six, with the mother of God before us. The church counsels us to have our eyes on the Holy Virgin. And of course, we're helped in this, in the Byzantine tradition, with the fact that we chant the Akathis on every Friday. Uh, this is extremely uplifting uh, for the faithful to remember that the Mother of God has gone before us in this quest for uh, asceticism. With zeal, not just because we have to. Let's be boiling over like a boiling over pot with zeal. With focus, the texts say don't lie supine or run indifferently. This is very easy to do, of course, when you're hungry, is just to lay down and sleep more. That's not the purpose of the fast. The text says don't lie supine and don't just run around trying to do something spiritual. Do it with focus, with prayerful focus. And lastly, with a, quote, heart on fire. Let it be a matter of your inner person, of your deep man, uh, that you are desiring to draw near to God because you believe in the kingdom of heaven and you aren't a, a world lover. You aren't someone who's just trying to satiate your life with gathering things. And therefore, Lent becomes, in the world lover's life, this unfortunate interlude from what he's really about, which is acquiring the things of the world. No. Let us not have that mentality. Let's have a heart burning on fire to be close to God and to become the kind of people, the loving, virtuous, holy kind of people that God is asking us to be and we want to be. This is the, these are the dispositions. Now, let me get into some practical to guide you. First, the very first reading in the sixth hour of Lent of Pure Monday is from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 1. And interestingly, the first reading we hear is on how not to fast. It's extremely providential. We are not to fast, and if you want to hear all the descriptions of Isaiah, go read the first chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. But basically, he asks the people not to fast externally. Don't fast and let it be just about what you do on the outside. Let it be about a broken heart. Let it be about repentance. And let it be about mercy and giving mercy to others. The connection between fasting and true prayer from the heart, pain of heart, and charity, absolutely clear in Isaiah. Don't just make it about external observances without, without a quest to try to fast from passions, not just from food. Right? We're trying to do an internal work here. So that's the first thing I want you to note. Whatever you do, don't fast in a way that God doesn't consider a fast at all. Take your food seriously and don't disdain the, the counsel of the church to tame your physical appetite. Very important. Monday through Friday, the church asks us to abstain and to fast, to abstain from certain types of foods that are luxurious and pleasant, all flesh meats, dairy products, fish, Wine and oil, that's right, Monday through Friday of all the weeks of Lent. On the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we're given a catalysis for wine and oil. That means you can do some fried fruit. Most of our fathers, what, what, how they understand the fast in the, in Monday through Friday is that you basically are eating simple, uncooked foods. You're eating according to the categories, the abstinence from the categories. We have fish twice in Lent. Once on the Annunciation, March 25th, and once on Palm Sunday, just before we go into Great and Holy Week. This is uh, the basic guidance. If you can't uh, keep it, try to strengthen yourself and at least learn the lesson of humility, right? The, these are the categories we abstain from. Also, there's an issue of volume. Try to reduce the amount that you're taking. Try to cut it at least in half by 50%. If you eat three meals a day, Unfortunately, these days, a lot of Americans eat three meals a day and snacks in between all day long, which is why we're the most obese nation in the history of the human race. Our forefathers typically ate two meals a day, which is why there is a prayer for two meals in the prayer books and not three. Uh, but try to cut that down. Whatever you're doing, try to cut it down in half. 
so that you can spend more time doing good deeds, serving others, learning, praying, <laughs> doing the things that uh, God's asking us to do that often we say we don't have time to do. Well, now you do. You're going to spend a lot less time cooking, a lot less time eating. Take that part seriously. Second, the church launches a, an incredible panoply of Lenten services. Lenten Vespers, we have great Compline that the parishes serve uh, in the evening. In the first week, I hope you were able to go to the great Compline and to the canon of St. Andrew of Crete, the canon of repentance. This is such a bomb for the soul. We break it up into sections in the first four days of Lent, and then we do it all together on the Wednesday of the fifth week. If you missed the first week, don't miss the great canon with all of its prostrations and bows of repentance uh, in the fifth week. The Akathist, as I was mentioning on Friday, often priests serve liturgies on Saturday mornings. The services, dear ones, are not done for the stasidia. They're not done for the chairs. They're done for you. That's why the, why the priests are offering. So slow yourself down. This is not the time to start new business endeavors. This is not the time to try to you know, increase your investment in your secular job. This is the time to stay, keep, keep stable there, but focus on prayer. Get to church. Get to the services as much as you possibly can. Use the prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian, which is appointed to be prayed by Orthodox Christians daily, morning and evening in Lent. Third, embrace mercy. Do all your fasting with a connection to who you're serving. Decide who you'll bless with the time that you have from not cooking so much, right? We usually make big amounts and we eat them over many days. We don't have to spend so much time cooking and eating. You're going to have a lot of extra time. You're also going to have a lot of extra money. Yes, you are. It doesn't matter if you're poor, medium, or rich. If you're cutting down your intake, you're going to have money. Your usual food budget will be greatly decreased. And you can take that money and attach it to a person or to a charity that you want to serve. Decide how much you want to save, what you want to deliver in at Pascha to someone, or perhaps deliver it as you're going through Lent in acts of mercy and service. Then when you're tempted, and you will be, if you fast seriously, you will be mightily tempted to, to cheat and to break your fast. If you have a person's face or a group of people through a charity that you intend to serve, and you have it before you always when you're fasting, then when you're tempted to break your fast, it will be a personal matter. It won't just be about you breaking a rule. No, no. It'll be a personal matter, and you will be challenged uh, to keep it. You'll be able to keep it better because you'll remember, if I break this, I'll be actually stealing from someone I want to help, I want to bless. So be, be serious at all. And lastly, let me say this. A common theme through this whole first week in the hymnody is that whatever you're going to do, do it happily. Do it with joy. To be a fuss bucket about any of this stuff is really to steal the significance of it. So whatever you do, let it be that you are trying not to eat dead animals because you want to eat the word of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. As you fast, do it to serve others, and don't let your attachment to pleasures stop you. The more you sow, the more you'll reap. Whatever you put into the great fast, dear ones, trust me, the Lord God is going to give it to you multiplied back at Great Pascha. I wish you all a soul-saving fast. Now available at patristicnectar.org. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a six-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum entitled, Let Everything That Hath Breath Praise the Lord, The Psalms in the Divine Services. The Psalter is the supreme hymn book of the Church of Christ, and individual psalms, thematically selected to accentuate the core purpose of each worship service, are appointed to be read and or chanted in each service. Father Josiah explains the significance of the particular psalms that are found in the Divine Liturgy, Orthros, Vespers, Compline, as well as the exceedingly important and popular Shepherd Psalm 22, Repentance Psalm 50, used in many liturgical services, 
and the Word of God Psalm 118. Father also begins each lecture with a brief discussion of particular commentary on the Psalms from different Holy Fathers. For these lectures and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.